Hello, dear colleagues. Thank you very much for providing to the IDI this great and wonderful opportunity to share a little bit with you what we are doing in the field of supporting size in fighting corruption. My name is Alain Roger Mamvu. I'm working at the Intosai Development Initiative as Capacity Development Manager. And in terms of uh, specific responsibilities, I am mainly in charge of the Sci Fighting Corruption Program. I am also the main contact person for French-speaking SAIs in Africa, which is also known as CREFIAF. So what are we going to share with you in this presentation? First of all, uh, for those of you who are not very, very familiar with the IDI, we are going to come back a little bit on the overall IDI portfolio of programs in terms of capacity development. Then we'll try to make a little bit linkage between the sustainable development goals and corruption, which is, according to us, the key justification why size should play a big role in fighting corruption. And of course, we will cover and discuss the different scenarios which, uh, in which SAIs could engage uh, for a better performance and a better contribution to the fight against corruption at the country level. And then we will uh, discuss with you our program, the Sci Fighting Corruption Program, which IDI launched in 2015. Uh, we will cover the main objectives of the program, the main components, but also what we have done in progress and what our uh, plans for the future. First of all, InterSci Development Initiative in brief. As most of you might already know, IDI is the InterSci body that works across the world to support size in some strategical areas. The IDI mainly supports size from developing countries in their effort to enhance their performance, independence, and professionalism. Here is an overview of the current portfolio of IDI's programs for the current strategic period. As you can see, the support that we offer to the size covers a wide range of capacity development areas related to institutional, organizational, and professional staff capacity development. The Sci Fighting Corruption Program we are going to discuss in this presentation is related to organizational and staff capacity development. Besides some multilateral initiatives, IDI has also developed a SCI-level support function through its bilateral program, which is aimed at providing an in-depth and more holistic support to SCI's evolving in challenged environment. Sustainable Development Goals and Corruption As we know, role of SAIs in contributing to achievement of SDGs has been recently recognized by the InterSci. And you would easily agree that to achieve all those SDGs, it is at the same time quite important that uh, a main focus is put on the specific SDGs related to the fight against corruption simply because there is a broad consensus that without meaningful action to reduce corruption, progress towards the other goals is likely to be extremely limited. Therefore, corruption represents a major obstacle to reaching all the SDDs, not just because it hampers economic growth and increases poverty, but also because it deprives developing countries from huge amount of money every year, according to Transparency International. Now we agree that size should play a critical role in the fight against corruption. What role should they exactly play and what are the scenarios and options for this? Most studies make a main distinction between preventive, detective and enforcement role when it comes to role of SAIs in fighting corruption. While detection and enforcement are narrower in focus, prevention, on the other hand, needs to have a wider and more systemic approach. But the choice of the SI in having a detective and enforcement power in addition to their preventive role would pretty much depend on their legal mandate and jurisdiction. 
That said, what is the global trend in terms of size practices when it comes to fighting corruption? The IDI 2017 Global Stock Taking Report shows that even if most SAIs have mandate to share information with anti-corruption institutions, only 55% of them have mandate to investigate corruption and fraud issues. And even fewer size, 39%, have the mandate to exercise oversight of national institutions whose mandate is to investigate corruption and fraud issues. Now, how can size contribute to the fight against corruption? The role of SAIs in fighting corruption should definitely be multifaced, with, for instance, incorporating corruption in size routine audit work, heightening public awareness on corruption, improving methods and tools for combating corruption, providing a means for whistleblowers to report instances, and, of course, very important, cooperating with other institutions in the fight against corruption. To help SAIs improving their role in fighting corruption, IDI has developed the SAI Fighting Corruption Program, among other initiatives. How is the program designed and who are the partners? The objective of the program is to achieve greater effectiveness of size in fighting corruption. The SAI Fighting Corruption Program has three components. The first one actually covers the core function of SAIs, which is auditing. Here, the SAIs are supported in conducting a performance audit of the institutional framework for fighting corruption to assess the robustness and effectiveness of the systems in place to prevent corruption, both at the country level and in some specific sectors, in order to address to the government constructive recommendations to improve that framework. Let's remind that the framework can be made of policies, formal laws, and regulations procedures, agencies, and bodies involved in the fight against corruption, etc. In the second component of the SAI Fighting Corruption Program, the SAIs will be looking inward to make sure that their own ethical practices are robust and especially compliant with ESI 30. SAIs will conduct an assessment of ESI 30 implementation in their working environment. The third component of the program involves some support at the level of the SAI. Here, IDI is going to support voluntary SAIs in setting up or improving existing mechanism for better collaboration with other stakeholders involved in the fight against corruption at the country level. The program is implemented at three levels global, regional, and SAI level. The global has a strong collaboration from design phase with a wide range of partners like UNDP, Working Group on Fight Against Corruption and Money Laundering, of course, participating SAIs and InterSAI regions. On this slide, you have an overview of the three program components I just presented, with the different resources used for each component. You can see, for instance, that the audit component, which is running from 2017 to 2020, is based on the IDI cooperative audit model. In the SAI leading by example component, which is going from this year to 2020, SAI's teams will be trained in ESI 30 assessment and will be conducting an ESI 30 assessment in their SAI to develop action plans to fill gaps. In the SAI stakeholder component, discussions will be facilitated with country level actors involved in the fight against corruption for better collaboration with the SAI. 
On this slide, you can see the overall participation in the program across the world. Over a total of 54 SAIs, we have two from Kaosai, eight from OLSFs, three from Eurosai, 12 from Arabosai, 15 from Krefiaf, three from Afrosai, -E, seven from Azosai, and four from Pasai. Here you can see some details of the specific size attending the program. As you can see, Krefjaf is the region where we have the highest number of SAIs, 15 SAIs. And Karosai is the region where we have the smallest number, with only two SAIs. Now, what are the progress that have been made in the program so far? As we said, everything started in 2015 when a first group of 21 SAIs from Krefjaf committed to the program. 2016 was a major step with the development of the two main material of the program, which are the guidance on auditing institutional frameworks for fighting corruption and the guidance on implementing and assessing ESI 30 implementation. In 2017, statement of commitments were also signed in English-speaking regions for the program. Those sites attended an e-learning course on auditing frameworks for fighting corruption. Last year, we also had the first workshops to plan the cooperative audit on institutional frameworks for fighting corruption that was done for English-speaking regions. We also had in 2017 the adaptation process of translated material to use it in other IDI languages and in all regions. Therefore, the material was translated and adapted uh, for OLASFs Arabosai and Krefjaf. Now, what are the outputs of the Sci Fighting Corruption program obtained in 2018? In Krefjaf, 39 participants were trained in auditing uh, frameworks for fighting corruption, and they are currently planning the cooperative audit. In Arabosai, the same process was conducted with 30 participants. Still related to the outputs obtained uh, in 2018, for English-speaking SAIs, two audit review meetings were organized this summer uh, in Nepal and in Zambia to actually provide feedback to the draft audit report submitted by the SAIs. This is a picture of the English-speaking SAIs participants at the audit planning meeting hosted in 2017 in Budapest by Sai Hungary. Here you have the second group of English-speaking SAIs meeting in July 2018 in Kathmandu, Nepal, to review the audit reports. Now, what are the plans for the program in the future? First, regarding the audit component, which is on auditing frameworks for fighting corruption. In English-speaking size, we are going to finalize and the size are going to publish the audit reports by the end of this year, 2018. In Krefjaf, the cooperative audit, which was launched this year, will uh, face his, uh, its main stage with the audit planning meeting and the conducting of the audit in 2019. In OLASEFs, we will have the audit training and the cooperative audit planning and conducting in 2019 as well, and in Arabosai, we will have the audit review meeting next year. Regarding the SAI leading by example component implementing ESI 30, when it comes to English speaking size, um, this year from the 15th of uh, November to the 15th of December, 
we will run the e-learning course on ESI 30 implementation to 30 participants. And next year, SAIS will assess ESI 30 implementations in their respective working environment. In Krefjaf, uh, we will have for this component the adaptation of the translated material and the training workshop will be uh, undertaken next year. In Olasef, we will have the e-learning course next year, um, followed by the ESI 30 assessment. Still regarding the SAI leading by example for Arabo SAI, um, this year we'll have the adaptation process of the translated material of the ESI 30 component and the training workshop uh, delivered to 30 participants will be done uh, next year um, followed by the assessment of ESI 30 implementation. Last but not the least, regarding the SAI stakeholder platform for fighting corruption, this component will actually be launched in 2020 once SAIs have made tangible progress on the first two components. Dear colleagues, thank you very much for your kind attention. We do hope that uh, this presentation actually raised your interest, uh, contributed to increase and enhance your awareness about our program. And uh, if you have any question about uh, the contribution of IDI to enhancing roles in, of size in fighting corruption, uh, you could still visit our website, or you could also write us to share your comments or suggestion to the following address. Thank you very much.